My name is John Rinaldi, and I'm here today to talk about DeviceNet. This is kind of a simple introduction of the 6.5 things that are very important for you to know about DeviceNet if you're not familiar with that technology at all. DeviceNet is one of the best ways to connect to a control logics or an uh, Rockwell automation architecture system. It's a can based system, and here's the things that you need to know about it. Number one, you need to know that that device net is object based. That means that the external view of every device on a device net network is a set of is, is that device looks like a set of objects. There are two kinds of objects. There are required objects and there are application objects. There's actually some other ones, but we'll skip the rest. So you have a set of objects required, the identity would be one of the prime objects that you find in every device, that device. The identity, an object, is simply nothing more than a collection of like data. Identity object, what is that? Things like data manufacturer, vendor ID, serial number, all the things that describe the device, model number, descriptive string name, things like that. There's also a, a device net object. The device net object has, the, has the things like the device net MAC ID, that's the address on the, bu on the bus, the MAC, uh, the baud rate that's being used, and everything concerned with the device net. So those are required objects. You have application objects. If you're implementing a flow controller, you might have a temperature object that has the temperatures that you measured. You might have a flow object that has the flow, the, uh, the current flow that's being measured. So you organize, you organize your data in a device net device in terms of objects with attributes for each of the data items within those things. Now that's not how you do it in software. In software you can do it any way you want. It's just the representation to the network is this object based. That's number one. Number two, second item that we have to talk about. Number two is going to be the messages, messaging. There's two types of messaging. There's explicit messaging, and there is cyclic or I.O. messaging. Cyclic or I.O. messaging. Explicit messaging is, is a message goes right to the object and says, I want to know, I want to read or write a object 64, attribute 2, something like that. You can open up the packet and you can see what's in the packet, and that's an explicit message. I.O. message, on the other hand, is just bits. Both sides have to understand the contents of that bit. The PLC sends some outputs out to the device. The device knows what every bit in that packet means. The device sends data back to the PLC, and the PLC knows what every bit in that. There's no header information. There's nothing to indicate what that data is. They both mutually understand it, also called implicit data to distinguish it from the explicit data. So the two kinds of devices, the, the two kinds of message types are the second thing you have to know about this. Third thing you should know. Third thing you should know about DeviceNet is that it's part of SIP. SIP is the common industrial protocol. That means this object-based structure, this messaging, is really what SIP is, is SIP. When you, that's the same for ControlNet, ComboNet, Ethernet IP, and DeviceNet all use the same object-based structure and the same explicit and implicit messaging. When you run, when you send those kinds of messages over the ControlNet physical wire, you get ControlNet. When you send them over Ethernet, you get Ethernet IP. When you send them over CAN, which is the basis for DeviceNet, then you get DeviceNet. So it uses the same object structure, the same messaging. That's what SIP is. So SIP is the guts for all of these things. SIP is owned by the ODVA, and they maintain the specification for all that. That was number, that was number three. Okay, what's the fourth thing that you have to know about that? Fourth thing you have to know is, as I've already referred to it, is that it's part of CAN. CAN is a, is a generic, cheap, easy way of communicating in an industrial network. Uh, it, was, it was created by Bosch in Germany. Bosch 
wanted to get all of the wires out of a car, so they needed something that they could easily move data around a car. They came up with this CAN network and created these little chips that could easily move data around the network. Rockwell brought that technology to the U.S. and has, and has used it in, industri in industrial automation and, and made it the basis for DeviceNet. So CAN is the physical network at, that moves data around. Now, the key thing about CAN is when you go to implement a DeviceNet device, there's a bunch of registers that control the timing on this network, and that timing has to be absolutely precise. If you get those registers wrong, your device net device will work kind of. It'll work most of the time. And you know what I mean when, it, when you, if you have a device that works most of the time. It means that you're going to be up at 3 in the morning trying to figure things out. So you better get those CAN registers done right. That's why you want to use a provider like real-time automation. Another thing, there's a bunch of operational issues that are very important for implementing device net. You have to understand what those are. There's LEDs. There's a spec for how to, use, how to use LEDs. Customers love LEDs because they can walk down their line and see that all the devices, device net devices are connected. There's also switches to set, to, that some people use to switch, set the addresses. And, and that has a, there's a specification for how to implement those switches. So there's a whole bunch of operational issues that you need to understand if you're going to implement a device net device. You have to think about whether your device is going to be non-isolated or isolated. And I tell you, a lot of people get this stuff screwed up. If your device is being connected to somebody else's power, you don't want that power getting mixed up with the power on the network. Because if you do that, it's gonna, it's, you're, you're going to end up with ground loops, you're going to end up screwing the whole thing up, and you could blow up all the devices on the network. Now, if you go isolated, there's a whole bunch of software issues that are tar that that come into play with that, that you've got to be very careful about. So this is a big decision with your, that you have to make, and you have to decide what you're going to do, if you're gonna, uh, how you're going to implement this, and you have to make sure you implement it properly. 6.5, pick a provider properly. You need somebody who really knows the device net specification, who knows how the hardware works, can, can verify that your hardware works, that your hardware is designed right, whether it's isolated or non-isolated, Real-time automation is the kind of company that can help you with that. We can give you a daughter card, we can give you software, we can give you a off-the-shelf gateway module. No matter what you need, real-time automation can help you. So that's a quick, short introduction of the 6.5 things that you need to know about DeviceNet. Have a great day.